Hey, hope you're doing good as always. Now, the video that I had planned for today was going to be about these cool looking dual colored 3D printed fishing lures that I made on the Orca Cygnus, a new 3D printer with dual extrusion, so you can do all these kind of cool dual colored prints. Now, unfortunately, I will have to wait at least a week before I can continue shooting that video and I didn't want to leave you hanging, so I figured I could answer some of your questions. Before we get started, I just want to give you a quick update. I like to do these occasionally just to show you the projects that I'm currently working on. And I told you about this one. This is the RC motorbike that I'm trying to drive on water and I haven't cleaned this tire up, but this is one of the prototypes, well, first prototypes and well, hopefully we can get this driving on water. And just a quick plug to follow me on Instagram, then you would know about this project. This is the T-Rex skeleton that I will put together. I just have a couple of pieces left to print, but so far this is looking pretty awesome. So I can't wait to get this assembled. Hey, look at this. We got the Anycubic Chiron in case anyone has been waiting for that printer. Anycubic does a pretty solid printer, so I have very high hopes. In the electric skateboard scooter department, this is apparently the new trendy thing. Hover shoes. Hey, let's do this properly with an introduction for once. There's been a lot of new subscribers. We just hit 260,000 subscribers. It's mind-blowing. So thank you very much for that. So I'm Simon. I'm going to begin by answering the most asked question of all time on RC Life On. Where do you live? It's beautiful. I live in the meatball eating, IKEA furniture shopping, blonde girls country of Sweden. Pretty close to Gothenburg in this offside community, village, whatever you want to call it. But I agree, it is gorgeous. Hey David, what software do you use to make your 3D designs or what do you think is the best learning and which for more advanced designs? I think Fusion 360 occupies all of those spots. Just like all the CAD softwares, Fusion 360 does have a pretty steep learning curve, though I would say it's easier than most other ones. And it's free, which is just phenomenal. And I'll make sure to post a link in the description below to an article that shows you how to get Fusion 360 for free in case you're having troubles with that. But to answer your question, Fusion 360 is what I use and is what I urge everyone else to use as well. Why didn't you use the 360 cam on a selfie stick today? So I have the Insta360 One, which is a 360 camera, which allows you to make really cool transitions and just different perspectives in just one continuous shot, which it, it's awesome. The only problem is that even though it's 4K, you have to remember that it's being stretched as well as the YouTube compression. And it brings the quality so far down that I wouldn't say it's necessarily even worth it. Which camera do you use to make videos? I use the DJI Mavic for drone shots, obviously. So whenever you see the cinematic landscape footage, that's from this drone. All of the underwater footage was recorded by the GoPro Hero 5, as well as the time-lapse of 3D prints, the onboard footage, most of the slow motion. And as for the camera I'm shooting on right now, it's the Canon 80D, the perfect overall camera. My only two complaints would be that it's not 4K and can only do 60 frames per second slow motion. Why are your cheeks always so red? Are you angry? Stressed? Did you get slapped? No, it's, it's a skin disorder. I never talk about this, so it's kind of an emotional subject, but it's a skin disorder called KPRF. More likely, you have seen people with bumps on their back arms. That's called KP. I have something called KPRF, which is the same thing, but I have it on my face. KPRF or keratosis pilaris rubra facie. So there's that. Out of all the RC and 3D printed projects, which one is your favorite and which one did you enjoy doing the most? Okay, so basically which one is my favorite? 
I'm looking at it right now actually. It's so delivering candy for kids. In case you missed it, I basically took an RC car, made it so I could watch through a camera, and I made a small box with, with candy inside that I could open remotely to reveal candy inside. So not being anywhere nearby the car, I could drive up to people and deliver candy, and often to kids, because they were more likely to take the candy. It's just such an odd thing to do that it became hilarious. How did you start your YouTube channel? What kept you going to this amount of followers? Are you making a living with making videos, or do you have some jobs next to it? No, that, that seems to be such a misconception that you have to have millions of followers to make a living on YouTube. I went full-time on YouTube when I had 15,000 followers one and a half years ago. And YouTube is, for all intents and purposes, my full-time job to this day. I'm not saying that I don't have side projects unrelated to my YouTube channel, but I, this is my job. How do you get the prints to stick on the bed? I've had this question before, but I will give a different answer this time, because last time I said that tape was the answer, and tape still works fine, but what I've actually started to use is these simple glue sticks, and here's how I do it. I put down a fat layer, and I let that harden, and that will stick for months. You don't have to reapply every single time, and just a great way to go about it. What settings do you use for exporting video from Premiere Pro? The best tip I can give you is, even though you are recording at 1080p, export that video as a 4K, because YouTube will compress the 4K video much less than it will the 1080. I saw a huge increase in quality when I started doing that. Uh, you were recording this alone, that's awesome, the view, the angle, etc. Uh, I enjoyed watching, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, yes, I make all my videos by myself, which can be nice because there is no distraction, but for a lot of things like the drone shots, that can be really tricky. Having the, well, RC airboat lined up with the drone at the same time, so you get that action cinematic shot. Everything from getting the idea to prepping the video, to the, through the printing, to, to editing, to actually recording the video, just everything I do by myself, which I think is the whole idea of YouTube, and I, I love it. Hey Earth Life on, I find your content awesome and inspiring, thank you very much. Quick question, would you have anything to say about the longevity about the CR10? Many videos on unboxing and instantly printing, but is there a known working life for a stock CR10? I agree with you fully, there is a lot of reviews of 3D printers and very few people actually go back and say how the 3D printer worked for the next half year. In me included, I'm really bad at doing that, but with that being said, I have a CR10, I have a CR10S, those are the two printers that I probably used the most out of all my 3D printers, uh, both being more than one year old, one and a half years old actually, and they have worked perfectly. Uh, the only thing that I have had to replace is the nozzles, which is to be expected, that's not specific to, to the Creality series, but actually all 3D printers. I found this question to be so good that I actually posted this on the Facebook group and with a few answers, the, the few comments that I got back to me, the general sense was that they too had their Creality CR10 to work for a really long time and quite reliably, but it's just like a car, it could break down tomorrow, it could also work for another 10 years. If you are watching to this point, you are probably one of the people that have been following me for quite a while, and to you, I just wanna say thank you very, very much, and I hope you will have an awesome day. Bye.